And we are live, I suppose. My name is Lionel McClintock, and I'm here with Robert Warren. And this is United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. Robert, hello, I would hello. Like to give you a little idea of why we're doing this. So we are one American and one Canadian that have been talking about this for a long time. And we decided that we should just do it. And there's been a lot of things over time where, you know, Canada doesn't do this, the U.S. doesn't do that, and nothing seems to, like, be the same, even though we're supposed to be best friends. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, we yeah, thought yeah, it might be yeah. helpful to have a little discussion about it occasionally. Yeah, basically, we can talk about everything that is similar, everything that's the same, everything that is vastly different. There are so many things. And we will have a couple of topics or a few topics to discuss every week. Uh, in addition to that, we'll give you a little snippets of what might be going on in the last 24, 48, 72 hours or so in the news, usually regarding the technology sector. Right. Just little quick snippets and then move on from there. But for right now, how about we talk about, since it's the big thing going everywhere with Google, with Samsung, with Microsoft, with Apple, AI is the present, not even the future, and they're still calling it the future. So what's our take on that one? Well, I mean, honestly, myself, I have no issue with it. And as a matter of fact, here recently, ever since I made that change, I told you that I made as far as my subscription to Gemini, um, I all of a sudden got some pop-ups on my phone like, hey, let Gemini write and reply for your email. Let Gemini write your text. But here's the only dumb thing that I noticed this morning. So when I left this morning, I was still connected to my Wi-Fi. So theoretically, I should have been able to say to my phone, hey, you know who, I'm not going to say. Oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> because, you know, I was going to happen and I do that. But yeah. my phone told me that it couldn't do that because it doesn't uh -huh. support communicating with my device. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Jim and I <laughs> is supposed to take the place of the assistant on the phone. Yeah. And it's, it should do and, the same thing as the assistant. Right. I just thought, well, maybe it's not a good enough connection. So I, I meant to try it when I got home and I forgot, but that was just kind of stupid because I was going to turn something on before I left that I forgot to turn on and it didn't work. Well, well, the thing, yeah, the thing too is, is that, is, is that it's supposed to actually go through assistant to complete the task where it's not capable of doing it. But that is a real hit and miss. In a lot of areas, I couldn't, I could not. I just basically tell my system, I don't want to say it out loud, obviously. I tell my system, you know, good night. And, and it turns everything off, lights, TV, every the whole bit. The last couple of nights, it's like, it either didn't do anything at all, or, or it would actually say, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't say it like that, but it might as well have. And, and it's, it's really annoying, but there are some things that I really like about the way it works. I've been using Gemini Advanced on the computer and on my phone, and I've been using the Microsoft, what's it called? Copilot. Um, not yeah. the pro version, just the, the standard one that comes free. And I, I actually like both of them for a lot of reasons. And I see in some cases one does slightly better than the other, but they're pretty much on par with each other. And one of the big things is, at least regarding phones, if it's anything to do with Google, it takes a lot longer to hit Canada. And that's one of the big things in a difference between the U.S. and Canada. And a lot of it may have to do with French language stuff, certain laws in Quebec that hold back applications that have to do French and English or English and French. So that may be the reason that a lot of the apps don't get updates or we don't get the new services as quick as in the US or even Australia or UK or Germany for that matter. And it certainly is the case because Google did admit that it was about a week or two ago. I believe I told you about that. And Google had actually mentioned that that's why Canada didn't get barred until after it was renamed Gemini. And right. even then we still don't have the app officially that you could sideload it and it works perfectly fine. But you have, so on uh, your phone though, do you, right. so when you, when you call up the assistant on your phone, is it still the regular assistant? It would be if I wanted it to be, but I chose to make it, I keep wanting to say bard. 
and I kind of wish they kept it that way now because it's. Oh, stupid. but you said oh, so you sideloaded the app right. is what you're saying. I, I did sideload the app, yes, but but oh, my okay. point is is that it it. Oh no, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, if I was only doing it on the web, then I would still have Assistant fully on my phone, and that would be it. Right. Because I would need to go on the web to get to Gemini, but I chose to do the app. But even then, you have a choice to not do that and just right. use the app separately. Yeah, I wanted to 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 make it part of it because every time they add a functionality, you'll have it immediately. And I believe they may have added a few things that make it work a little bit better. And one of the things they did the other day was they updated it so that it would work better with assistant so when i first installed it for instance you couldn't tell it to turn your lights off at all well, that's kind of the point though to use it as a you know the default that's kind of what they want you to do so why would you choose not to use it as default if you actually want to use it exactly. you know, so it doesn't make sense to me but that's that's it's kind of obviously different. still got yeah. some bugs and things gotta get figured out which is fine i mean you know, I'm in technology. You've been in technology. We both understand technology that, especially with new stuff like this, it it just is what it is. And, you know, eventually it'll get ironed out and things will work. And, or Google will bury it and kill it. And it'll never come back again. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the Google graveyard. There's yeah. too many things to even talk about in there. And, and no, you know what? A funny thing is I'm not afraid they're going to do that to the Pixel phone. Um, I, I'm really not. However, I'm afraid that every service that makes the Pixel great will eventually die. <laughs> yeah. That might be the biggest problem. But in all honesty, if I didn't love Pixel phone so much, I may not be using much of Google at all, except for Maps and, and Gmail. And of course, searching the web. At this point, it's getting to the point where as you use these, these AI tools, um, you're not really picking who you're going to search from. At some point, even even... Gemini is going to return a search result that because of what you're asking for is, is going to be found on a different search engine higher up than Google does. And it may actually be using that. I mean, because it's AI, if it doesn't, then it's not really AI and it's fake in my opinion, in that sense. So I, I can see it might take a few years. But it's going to get to the point where nobody's really going to go to Google anymore. Nobody's going to go to whatever Microsoft is calling their search now. Uh, I don't even know anymore. Nobody's going to go to Lycos. Lycos? I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. I just dated. Now you go back, no no I one's going to use Netscape anymore. I just dated myself. Alta Vista. I? <laughs> Alta Vista. <laughs> uh Rogers at home or Comcast at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You I was got mail. The first time I got a one meg modem. Let me tell you, I'm all yeah. oh, my friends and I bright. I got a megabit per second download, man. <laughs> yeah, run some AI on that. Why don't you? Uh, you know what? I want to. You know what? I maybe I one day you should actually look up and see when the first online AI of any kind actually happened. It's probably long before the stuff we're talking about now. There's got to be something somewhere. And I yeah, but I doubt it was it, even it would, it would have I remember the first chat bots were absolutely terrible, but oddly, you could still talk to them. You, you can hardly talk to these AI chat bots now, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah. So I guess the, 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 the only real big difference, as I mentioned, is that some of the features available in the U.S. may not yet be available in Canada, but um, aside from that, it seems to be pretty much the same there as it is here. And, and you know what, put in the comments, if, if you like AI, if you, if you, if you trust it, if you want to see it, if you think it's ridiculous and you're worried the machines are going to rise up against their <laughs> overlords, <laughs> and, which is us, then, you know, leave those comments and, you know, is Will Smith going to have to come save us all or, or, or something like that? I don't know. But for now. I'm not really worried about John Connor, personally. <laughs> but, but you know, leave us a comment. What What do you think about it? In the meantime, we could we could talk about you know something else too. Something else I had brought up earlier is something that Apple's had in the news in the last couple of days, and they have gone on record to say that they say do not put your wet phone in a bag of rice to dry it out. 
And yeah, see, I, I haven't heard that. So where, where, where did you hear that from? Because okay, I have not seen that. Let me get a, pardon me while I put on my old fart, old fart face here. I'm going to go right into here. And, and see, I'm going to use Google. I could, <laughs> I could ask Jim and I, but why, why not? Right. Apple rice. That's all I, oops, that's okay. Except that the Google keyboard doesn't work and it puts some rice. That is something I might want to rant about at some point in the future. So let's just, let's just remember that. <laughs> well, Google has lots of subjects we can rant about. That's for sure. Yes, yes they do. It's not coming up the way I want it to. You know what? I, I'm going to do this right, 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 right while we're doing this. I'm going into Gemini. Forget it. This would be easier. All right. Opening up Gemini. And that is Gemini. And we're going to do this right here, right now. Article about Apple stating not to use rice. Now, the one thing about it is it does go on for a while before it'll give you an answer. It's, well, actually, that's not as bad as I thought. Okay, don't put your wet phone in apple rice. I, gotta, I can't find the air. It's not, it didn't it, say. It's probably going to give you recipes for apples and rice. No, no, no. It, it gave me the right thing, but it did not, it did not cite the, an article, which is actually, that's bad in my opinion. Um, it's got the news. It's not citing an article. It's not citing Apple. It's just mentioning. It specifically states, don't put your wet iPhone in rice. Apple explains why. For years, the go-to method for saving a wet phone has been putting it in a bag of rice, but Apple is now officially advising against it. It goes on to say, tiny rice particles can get inside your phone therefore damaging delicate components. This is, by the way, completely Any rice factual. particles? No, no, it's actually 100% true. That rice has dust. And yes, I know. know. Yeah, so it, it, it is true. Rice doesn't actively pull moisture out. That is 100% true. Your phone will usually dry naturally if left in a well-ventilated area. 100% true. Rice can cause corrosion. Again, this is something people don't realize, but this is actually true too especially if your phone was exposed to liquids other than fresh water. So if there's actually moisture in it, the rice, if it actually were to soak up anything at all, may rot in the spot that it actually it takes yeah. in you the moisture. In, in other words, locking the moisture further into the device, which could, of course, cause corrosion. What to do instead? Turn your phone off immediately. That's when everyone should know remove SIM card and any case. Uh, absolutely 100% true. Uh, I don't generally take the SIM card out, to be honest with you, because it's in a watertight <laughs> spot. So therefore, no. Place in a dry, airy location for several hours. Um, it shouldn't take several hours if you have an IP6768. Yeah, but the whole point of that IP rating is that you don't, you shouldn't have to worry about. Yeah. Kind but, of, but here's uh, the problem is it some people, still will use your phone. Some people think they can still plug their phone in and you shouldn't even plug, be plugging. Well, no, in. your phone is wet to be honest with you because it can still cause damage. Right. If the liquid detected alert appears, don't charge your phone until it's completely dry. Now with any new Apple right. phone, Samsung phone, Google phone, pixel phone, or as far as I know, even plus phones, last couple of them, you can't charge them anyways, because if you, it would, if you, there's a, you should get a notification that says uh, dirt or moisture detected that, that uh, your port is turned off. And right. if you try to plug it in, absolutely nothing will happen. And you get a notification right. once it detects that it's dry. And the best thing to do if your phone does get wet and you're concerned about it is blow gently into the earpieces, into the, if you have a headphone jack, which is pretty rare or, you bought a very inexpensive phone or, and of course, into the, into the, uh, or lightning port, <laughs> if you have it, sorry, no offense. Uh, but that, that said, that's the best thing to do. Do that, leave it in a dry place. And usually anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on whether you actually accidentally went swimming with it or, or if you just act, dropped it in, 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 in the sink for two seconds. And by the way, if you do drop it in a sink with like soapy suds or chemicals or anything like that, you need to use cold water, rinse it off. Like literally rinse off your phone. Unless right. it's not waterproof. If it's not waterproof, 
than just take it back to the store and tell him you need a replacement. <laughs> That's it. That happened to my HTC, what was it? One of the one phones. I don't remember which one. Pun intended. Uh, dropped into a bucket and instantaneously died. Instantly. Oh, but yeah. ever, since, ever since then, all my phones have had at least some form of waterproofing. Or not waterproofing, water. Right. Yeah. That's the whole, I mean, you know, they, they, they advertise the IP rating and they say, oh, it's, you know, five meters for 30 minutes or five feet for 30 minutes. Right. Um, right. you know, as long as you don't, you know, do longer than that, then there's like no issue. So theoretically you should be able to drop your phone in the shallow end of a pool, <laughs> you know, get it out in a couple of minutes and just dry it off. Like you said, and everything's fine and dandy without doing anything. Absolutely. 100% you know. true. And, so, I, and I, I think I've showed you the video of when I went to the lake this past summer with my pixel seven pro, I went swimming with it in my hand in a deep lake, dove off the boat and swam around shooting the video and, and, and underwater and, and, and everything. I did everything with it. One thing I did do was completely forget that I was wearing my watch. I actually didn't even remember that until I got home two days later. I was like, wait a minute. Was I wearing my watch all that time? I mean, and the funny thing is you'd think, okay, well, it's fine. This, this technically is rated for five atmospheres. This can go way lower than the phone can and for a lot longer. But look at this. One little bump, bottom of the lake, right? Yeah. <laughs> So well, I'm very, interestingly I'm too, when I was on vacation, actually I went to Costa Rica when my son got married and we were in the pool and I had, let's see what that I, I was one of my pixels it was a pixel six, maybe the pro I don't right. remember. I think it was a six, but at any rate, it was IP rated. Right. And 67. I was in the pool taking some pictures and I dropped it. And I didn't even, I didn't even fret. I just like, Oh, I leaned down and picked it up. And, you know, it was like, oh, okay. And then it started acting weird. I'm like, uh-oh. But here's what I did. And I didn't realize it is. I hit the button on the side. Yeah. So when I hit the button on the side, it let water in the case. So apparently you can't touch any buttons. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just, so I just opened up the, the, the valve, so to speak, and just let water inside the phone, apparently. Because I, it wasn't underwater that deep or that long. It should not have been damaged. But yeah, I hit the no, button, yeah. and that's the only that's the only thing I can think of. I suppose that's possible. But I mean, like I said, I use the the button because when you're when you're when your hands are wet, you can't use a touch screen to take pictures, right? You you have to use the the volume button, and not an issue. Uh, three straight phones that I've done that. I've taken yeah, I, I don't know, but it's. Uh, By it, the way, I am not telling anyone they should go swimming and with their phones. That is a risk you take yourself. Do not do it because I said that I've done it because you may be very unhappy with the results. A lot of people either lose their phone at the bottom of the lake or they they don't, but their phone stops working. So. In reality, I got lucky. Yes, I've had three phones in a row I've been able to swing with. That's the first time I've done it in the lake and gone down like four or five feet. But don't. It's not a good idea. If and you have way, if on your own the, recognizance ocean, on swimming, let us know how it went. Yeah. <laughs> if, 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 you, if, you, if you're anywhere near the ocean, you think you'll go in the ocean, don't do it with a phone. Uh, IP68 rated is not salt water. It's nothing to do with salt water, and it yeah. doesn't do yeah. chlorinated pool water. So there's a lot of people think, oh, well, my pool apparently doesn't have chlorine, so I can go in it. Yeah, but there's three ways that you can go into a public pool that are actually clean. There's chlorine, chlorinated public pools. There's ultraviolet public pools, and they're very few and far between. Is that how you say it? Few and far between. But they've never do. even heard of an ultraviolet. I've heard, you know, the salt water no, there and are. chlorine. There, there are, but, you, but one thing you do want to do is you want to make sure that you don't take your phone in because the only one it would be safe in would be the ultraviolet one because it, it's not going to harm it. But a salt water pool is actually got, oh, good Lord. It's, it's not as salty as the ocean, but it's more than enough to corrode the heck out of your, of your device, your phone, or your watch. Don't take your watch with you either. 
And let's face it, most public pools don't allow even don't even allow diving watches because well, I, I don't typically, draw. you know, swim with any of my electronics anyways, regardless. Shouldn't. But some people do. I mean, there, there are swimmers who like to swim with their watches, but some public pools don't allow it because they can get lost in the pool. People dive down to get it. Accidents happen and they don't want that. Right. So some public pools won't allow it, at least not during family swim hours anyways. But yeah, that's yeah. So you don't swim salt water uh, or chlorinated water. If you drop your phone or your watch into it, into the dish soap, it should be rinsed quickly. If it's, if it's IP rated, rinsed quickly. So that there's no residue and then just a quick padding with a towel and leave it to dry in, in a nice ventilated area. Stick a fan on it if you want, as long as it's not uh, really heavy, because you don't want to blow water into it, right? So there you have that. Right. <laughs> Apple and their rice. They, who knew we'd talk about that for, for 12 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Oh, boy. All right. Well, we can move on to another subject that I actually don't know as much about, but I thought it would be interesting to bring this up because it is obviously another thing that is the future. Well, in some places so far, and that's autonomous driving. And right now, the only autonomous driving that we're getting realistically, of course, is, is I want to say, that's not taxis. What's the right word for ride share? So what is it yeah. called? Waymo, not to be confused with Venmo. Is that what it's called? Waymo? That's another um, thing Canada doesn't have is Venmo, but we'll discuss that some other yeah, time. We, yeah, we can get into that too. That'll be a good segue, actually. But <laughs> San Francisco's a little issue there. They're having some problems with theirs. They've been in the news quite a bit recently, and they've had a, a few crashes. Actually, they've had several, as far as I know, over the last, well, since they launched it, but certainly over the last several weeks or few weeks, there's been a couple of cabs, but the same one was hit or same vehicle hit by the same cab twice or something like that. I can't remember. I have to look that up now, too. What is, what is interesting is I, I'm curious about how that works because often i wonder if they brought it to toronto i would probably want to try it i think i would get in just to see what oh, i would try it 100 percent. but as something that would be there all the time would i want to do it you know i don't <laughs> think i would i think i'd be too afraid to try it to be doing it all the time getting on that that one trip just to try it out i think i would love it i'd probably have i'd, I'd probably enjoy it a lot but if I had to go to work every day on one of those things, I don't think I'd want yeah, but to. Here, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. And people get all upset about, you know, oh, it's crashed and they make a big deal. Oh my gosh, it's crashed. In that one autonomous crash, you probably had 15 human crashes that no one's talking about. Well, yeah, absolutely. But here, but, but so, I mean, when you look at the human, uh, statistics, the human is going to be going to be responsible for most of it. It is possible the machine could make a mistake. Absolutely. But sure. what about that drunk guy who doesn't care that the Waymo's in the middle of the intersection right now with the right of way? Uh, an actual driver might possibly know to either accelerate, turn, or, or, or brake, or any combination thereof to avoid said drunk driver. Whereas the Waymo might just go, oh, I guess I should speed up a little bit, still get clipped and put you off a pole and wrap you around a tree. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how they, they, I, they, I'm being negative. I realize that the algorithm to understand like, Hey, this car is there and it shouldn't be, it's going to occupy the same, occupy the same space as me or whatever it's, you yeah. know, thinking in its electronic brain, but it, the amount of miles that autonomous driving has driven and you take the number of accidents that have occurred is statistically very low. If you look at the numbers and again, I reaction times, sleep, sleepy driving. I mean, all the things I would take an autonomous vehicle over a human driver any day. I just think that, you know, yes, there's things that still need to be perfected. Like for example, you know, how does it know when it's snowing? And there's snow on the ground. How does it know where the road is? Because, hell, I don't know where the road is. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> well, with all so, due respect, there's a lot of things that you got to figure it out. And, but as a Canadian, I'm pretty sure I know exactly where the snow is. And it's underneath the dang tires that are spinning. 
Ask anybody. But, else. but you know what I'm saying. But like, you can't see any lines. You can't see you know any kind of designation of like the road goes this way or that way or straight or whatever the case may be. So, I mean, I obviously, I, I guess it could probably use GPS coordinates where a human can't. So maybe that's an advantage. I don't know, but there's still things that's got to be figured out. And that's why it's not a 100% get in my car, put on my Apple pro creepy goggles and work yeah. while I'm driving or go to na- take a nap while I'm driving. Cause yeah, it's not exactly. supposed to be used that way. You're still supposed to pay attention. Yeah. Okay. Your, your, your device there in front of you. I just sent a link to the thing that I had mentioned before, because this sort of segues into that monocab idea that I was mentioning before. And it's, it's kind of hard to see some of the, some of the information. I don't bother with the YouTube video obviously right now, because we're, we're actually in here doing this. So I click on the actual one below it. It has a lot of information about it, but it's a long read in that respect. So what I saw was the article underneath it. You can see the pictures of what it does. Yeah. And I'll just tell everybody in here, Monocab is a company that is attempting to do, and I guess they've done some testing, but what I saw earlier as they're trying to do this in America now, apparently was a, uh, I guess it's a, it would be the buying or possibly building, but I think buying some defunct rail lines and being able to put gyro activated cars that basically run on the one track and stay up with a gyro. And hmm. that way they can have one going in either direction. But the interesting thing about it is it is a ride share. So you don't stand there waiting for the next one to come. You use an app and it sends one down the line to pick you up from where, where it is you are waiting for it and then takes you to where you're going along that line. I, I can see huge amounts of faults with that plan as a ride share. And of course, if it was just going to be rapid transit, I would see I could see how that would work really well as rapid transit, to be honest with you, if there were a lot of cars, like three every minute, you know, <laughs> for, for about 10 minutes. Like and, for a you, know, they, you would probably only fit five or six or eight people in each one, but they're all going one way. And so you'd have one and a minute later, another one, and a minute later, another one, and a minute later, another one, and then, and then an eight minute gap. And then you'd have another eight or nine or 10. But meanwhile, you go, you'd have the other track to go. But that would be obviously extremely costly. They can make a lot more money by doing it as a ride share. But I mean, yeah, you're well. going only from point A to point B, no matter what. There's no point anything else in between, or you can't go off to a different point A. Point A, B, B, you know, it doesn't exist. You're on one line and that's it. Yeah. And I well, I mean, you know, I've only, I've been in New York a handful of times. I've ridden the subway each time I've been and their cars run pretty continuously. You don't have to wait very long from car to car. So it, it's, you know, it is possible. And again, you know, especially if you're having autonomous cars, they can stagger their distance exactly like they need to, you know. Well, you know, yeah, the, the cars but what, in New York the, and all that, they're the human way control. Work, so. The only way these ones work is in the style that they make them. If they make them bigger, then the amount of gyro system they have to put in it makes it unbelievably heavy and ridiculously inefficient to run. So it really only works in a small format, which would mean you'd have to run way more, which again reduces the efficiency if someone's using it in a rapid transit format. Rapid transit works great on a bigger scale. You put a bunch right. of cars together that weigh a little bit less. That's why even a lot of cities now, even with some subways, are building like partial subways and partial above ground and even some elevated on the same line. Toronto's got three projects like that going right now where they start underground, go above ground, and it's, in a couple of cases, there is even elevated sections. And they're using... Do a lot of large Canadian cities have mass transit of of whether it be subway, rail, or whatnot? A lot of Canadian cities, big cities. Large. I mean, like like Toronto, like Vancouver, and Winnipeg. Well, really only like five in the first first place. And Toronto and Montreal are really the only two that even come close to competing. Vancouver may sound like a really big city, 
That's a beautiful city. Um, but in reality, Vancouver is actually very small. They have a lot of other cities around them. Think of them as more like a Dallas with a whole bunch of. Yeah, well, I mean, you could still have a, a, tr a tram or a railway. They I do. Mean, they're still big enough to that. They have, they have an elevated thing that's, I, I, but I can't remember what they yeah. call it, but it's been around for, for decades and, 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 and they, it's very, they're pretty, very proud of it out there. Montreal has a more extensive subway system than Toronto. Even when Toronto's finished building the next three that they're working on right now, they'll still be behind Montreal because Montreal built theirs out so much faster. They started later than Toronto and built it out much faster. Well, that's the thing where the U.S. has is, is failed, in my opinion, is mass well, they've transit. Done, they've, they've because they... Oh, no. <laughs> Mo not everyone, not everyone. Some of them have. New York's system is so extensive, it's hard to call any in the whole thing as a, as a whole a failure. I don't think New York's is a failure at all. I think New York's is probably the biggest success in in as rest. a whole. Mass transit in the United States is terrible. Oh, okay, it's a failure. Well, where where because where, where's a good most example? cities? Where? Most cities, like for let's take Nashville for example. Nashville is a fairly large, spread out met, met, metropolitan base right it's right at a million people it could really be served well with some form of railway to go around the city to the outskirts like for example yeah, i live nothing. 30 miles outside of nashville it would be great to have a train that went into nashville but okay so it wait, a minute, wait a minute it you're, doesn't you're exist not, you're, not, you're not talking about the same like the, like straight mass transit like 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 new york subway or chicago's you know, L train, you're, you're talking about commuter services of any sort, whether it be like an L train or the subway or just a, but they um, don't even have commuter services for the outlying areas. Th there's one train called the music city star. I think it is. It's a okay. crappy old train that literally goes down like, yeah, it's, I did see now this, is there, there's small you know. things that exist, but as a whole in a large scale, right. It's it's a miss, and it's like that in a lot of cities. Well, it's I'll a give miss. you this. I'll give you this for our larger cities. Here's what I can tell you: We are, I already mentioned Vancouver. I don't know the ins and outs and the details. I do know that they've had a, a, tra a rapid transit system there for for decades, and people love it there, and they seem to do fine with it. Maybe they need better, maybe they need more, but that's something you actually, if you if you live in BC, if you're in the Vancouver area, or Burnaby, or anything like that, leave us leave us a comment. Let us know. Tell us about it. And we'll talk about it. As for Montreal, I mentioned a wonderful subway. By the way, Montreal subway does have tracks, but they also have these concrete blocks and it rolls on rubber tires. It is the smoothest subway you will ever get on in your life. At least in North America, because this is apparently a thing in France too, from what I understand. But <laughs> that's only what I Right. What I've been told, I don't know. When I went to Europe to visit my son in 2019, we were in Italy and we took the train from Naples into Rome, then to Milan. And it was a high speed, 200 mile an hour train that felt like I was floating on air. It was amazing. Well, well, I, I was like, I was like, I, I don't even understand how this let, is possible. Let, let, me, it was let, me, let me just stop you right there because that's literally going into a completely different subject. That has nothing to do with mass transit. Or, no, but or I'm just saying your, railway in I, general. I, I get that, I'm like, talking we have about Amtrak here, trains. and Amtrak is, is yeah. No, nothing. I'm, but I'm talking about subway trains. This yes, is a I subway understand. train that is running on rubber tires. It's absolutely fantastic. It's not quiet, and I hate it. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It's extremely loud, and I hate it. But Toronto, of course, has, has our, our, our subway system, which is growing. We have light rail, rail transit. We still have streetcars. Um, but now we have the newer streetcars that are actually two or three strung together, or four even, because there's short sections. And I, I refer to them as trams. If you, go to the, if you go to anywhere in Europe, they wouldn't call them a streetcar. They'd call them a tram. That's what they are. And they're actually really comfortable and very efficient. The only U.S. city I can think of that has tra trams is San Francisco. I mean, I could be wrong. So that, if you live in a city that has trams, trams no, those or aren't trams. whatever you want those to call it, streetcar, tram, whatever you want to call it. No, no, um, no. Those are trolleys. That's I'd be curious. They're, they're, those it, are trolleys. Nobody else has trolleys. They're I, just, you got to go to Europe to see a trolley somewhere in the mountains somewhere. But in any case, Ottawa now has a light rail transit system. They have a few lines and. They have theirs running. 
Calgary's had a, an LRT, and so has Edmonton for decades. Um, they have a, at least two or three lines each or something like that. The way those cities are built out, they just don't need this massive network the same way. But they're building them out as their cities are getting bigger. So basically, yeah, most of the biggest cities do have decent, I want to say, rapid transit. But most areas also have commuter services. Ottawa does, which is basically the same system that runs outside of Toronto or the greater Toronto area all the way through the Niagara region, or what we call the Golden Horseshoe. Of what which do you mean commuter are. systems? Is that bus? It, it could be anything. Buses, trains, whatever. Commuter meaning oh, wow. that you don't live in, in the core urban area, but you need to get there to, to live, work, visit people, whatever, vacation. We have what's called go train or go bus system or the go system, really. And you can get a buses, trains, you can shift from one to the other. And just recently, they've announced that you pay one fare. So if you're, say, in Barrie, Ontario, which is about as far away from Toronto as you live from Nashville, roughly, maybe slightly more, I'm not sure, but roughly, that, that, that is, if you get on the GO train there, or a bus, whatever, you get in Toronto and you still need to take a subway. You don't have to pay again. You pay just the one fare, and it's the GO fare. If you get on a bus in Toronto and get off at the GO station and transfer to the GO bus to go to another town where it goes, you only pay for your bus fare until you get off the bus. And then when you scan your card again or tap your card, you then get charged the, the GO fare, but minus the difference you already paid for the original bus. And that's just something they just implemented in the last couple of weeks. So it's, it's kind of nice. So it, it, it's, it's a much more efficient system in that respect. Calgary doesn't have a, a system like that, or neither does Edmonton, because their outlying cities and towns are like towns of 700 people that are like an hour and, eight, an hour and a half away. So <laughs> they, they just don't have the, they don't need the infrastructure for that. There are some systems in place in Vancouver. I don't know what there are. So I guess it can be more efficient in some areas, but I'm assuming that depending on where you are in the U.S., there may be some cities that are you're better off than, than others. Like I, I, I would think New York would have a good commuter system. Well, I mean, they have buses in the, in the subway. We have buses here galore, but, you know, we don't have any kind of, you know, rail of any significance. Okay, so basically what you're saying is if I come to Nashville to visit, I have to bring a car or rent one. Yes, well, but, <laughs> you know, with Uber, no. I mean, that's, you know, I guess that's the new mass transit is Uber. Yeah, no, I don't Uber anymore. I've done, I've, I'm done with my Ubering. I can Uber twice, and I've already spent a day's worth of, of car rental. So, yeah, but I can, well, for me personally, for me and my wife personally, when we travel, we go to a large city, especially one we don't know, we absolutely Uber regardless because we went to Chicago for the first time many years back and it cost us probably three days worth of rental car to park everywhere we went to park. In addition, the headache of just trying to find a the parking place and to a parking spot it's just not worth it to us. It's you, I, you we'd did, much rather pile in an Uber and say, take me here. They drop me off. And, and you made a mistake. Go. You made a mistake. See, you live in an area where there's a lot of people. Like a lot of people. It's funny, especially people in, in some people in Canada. I live in Chicago. And, and, and hang on a second. I'm not finished. I didn't say you lived in Chicago. Did I say that? I did not say that. What I said was you live in a place where there's a lot of people. But it's not like a metropolis. Like a lot of people think Nashville and the area around Nashville and other cities and towns surrounding it are small and tiny. People think of Nashville is like a one horse town. They don't realize that it's not, it's a good sized city. It's bigger than most Canadian cities, um, save for the, you know, the top six or whatever, or top five, whatever it is. But also there are a lot of towns around the area that have a decent amount of people in them. And they, and I agree with you, they should have a rapid transit system, but here's the mistake you made when you go to Chicago or any other big city. Don't try to drive downtown. What you do is you drive to another area where you call, it's like a park and ride. Every big city has a park and ride. They may not call it park and ride, but it's the same idea. You, you park your car and you either pay nothing or a significantly less 
than a city parking lot hey, car. You ever been to Chicago? You ever been to Chicago? Yes. Yes, I have. Like, and been a tourist and walking around and driving around? Yeah, dude, I... Okay, then you know I that just nowhere in Chicago, the project. No, you know the projects don't exist. Nowhere. It doesn't exist. You know, there the is no free parking. No, the projects don't exist anymore, but the projects used to be a thing. You know, good times, anything, you know? <laughs> that was a thing. The projects were real. And me and, and, and two of friends inadvertently took the wrong road and drove into the projects. Now, I'm mulatto, and these guys are white as the driven snow, and we're in the ghetto where white people just don't go at that time. What does this have to do with parking your car? It has everything to do with parking a car. What my point is, is that it's not like that anymore. It's, it's, they've cleaned all that up. There are lots of places to park further from downtown and then take a train. I'm not doing that. That's a waste of time for me. Okay, I want to go from my hotel and I want to go to my place that I'm going to go. What if you went to Niagara Falls? And then I'm going to go from my place that I'm at and I want to go to the next place I want to go. What if you it's went a waste to of time to have to take three different modes of transportation. Okay, what if you went to Niagara Falls? Would you would you Uber everywhere in Niagara Falls too? Well, I don't know. I've never been to Niagara Falls. But if a city that I've never been to, more than likely I would, yes. Niagara Falls isn't that big. But I could tell you, outside of the what you might think of as well, the tourist area, there's about five or six places that you would probably even consider going outside of the tourist area. So that is an area where you actually would want to just take the car. And you find one of the seven parking lots where you're going to find parking. It's going to cost you 30 bucks. You leave the car there for the day and you walk around all day. It's not that big a place. Well, that's that's yeah. a different scenario. And those these things I, I investigate before I go somewhere. Like when we go to Louisville, I don't typically Uber in Louisville. Louisville is a cool little city. It's got a lot of cool history to it. We'll typically go park, You've walk been to around. the Baseball Hall of Fame, I'm assuming. Been to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Been to some concerts there. The, yeah, the, yeah. the uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken Arena, you know, <laughs> the KFC oh, Arena. Call it, what they call it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, Crazy. but. Yeah, you know, there's some cities that to me it's just not it's not worth it. I don't I don't right. want to fool with with parking. It's it, some cities are just too hard to get around in. No, I I you know what I completely agree with you. I mean, in all honesty, last time I drove to Montreal, I made up my mind I was never going to drive downtown again. I li I love going downtown in, in Montreal, but I honestly driving downtown in Montreal is as bad as driving downtown in Toronto. I live here and I will not drive downtown anymore. I had one lot that I was willing to go downtown anytime because there was always a spot in that lot and it always cost me about 13 14 dollars something like that to park for like five hours or something and I had no problem with that I, I no problem and then the parking lot closed because they were building condos so I parked in the street it was the last what do you call it metered parking on the street that would I guess what you'd think of as an older amount that they, that, that they were asking for so I could basically park for like six bucks for three hours and then go back three hours later and do it again. I didn't even have to go back. Sorry. My mistake. That's it's all in the app on a phone. So you just go into your phone and go, Oh, I, I mean, look, minutes, I'll do it again. I even but, pay but, for a parking but, spot that? in Nashville. Right. I pay for a parking spot. I pay for a parking spot in a garage in Nashville. Right. And when we were going to the Nashville SC games, their parking around the stadium is atrocious. We of would, course. Drive to my parking spot, park my car, take an Uber from downtown Nashville, which is 15 minutes to the stadium, and then back to the car. Because getting your car, it took us two hours to get out of our parking spot the first time we went. Whereas I can right. Uber from there back to my car in 20 minutes. It's just not even worth it. I, 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 totally, I totally get that. And it's like, it's like I was saying, that parking spot that I was talking about on the street, it, it, it just became too, it got shut down. Like the condo took over the entire thing. There is not a single parking place anywhere in downtown Toronto that won't cost you a minimum of $20 for like one hour. And right. I'm sorry, I'm not paying $20 to have my car sit for an hour. What are you kidding? It takes, right. I, I park the car and it's going to take me 45 minutes just to get where I'm going. And then I'm screwed. So but that's I why I bought the parking spot. I have to either walk out, get to the bus, take the bus to the subway, and then go downtown, 
or I have to find a park and ride spot and then, and then go downtown from there. And I'd probably do the park and ride, like depending on how late I was planning on being, I'd probably find a mall, uh, about halfway to downtown from where I live. And I would just park, you know, along the subway line, I mean, and just park in the mall parking lot and then jump on the subway, go downtown for a few hours, jump on the subway, come back, get in my car and Bob's your uncle. I'm on my way. Yeah, but that's why I, that's, that's why I chose to get a parking spot in a parking garage in Nashville because the cost of parking now for like when we go to Predators games or if we just want to go to dinner or whatever the case may be, it's $20, $25. You know, it's not an hour. It typically is a three or four hour time frame, which is fine. But for what I pay for the parking spot, I average for the amount of times we go into Nashville, it averages out about $15 a, 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 a parking instance as opposed to 20 or 25. So I'm actually saving money by renting a spot. It's ridiculous. I, I, I totally get that. But I do have to say this. We're actually probably going to end up going a little over where we wanted to go on this, on this first podcast. So we're pretty much going to have to cut it short right there. We ended up talking about parking a little bit longer than we wanted to. And that all came about because of the question of what was rapid transit like in big cities in Canada versus the U.S. So apparently, and I have heard things like this from other people before, a lot of Canadian cities are doing a little bit better than a lot of the big American cities in that respect. But I don't think that is completely global in that situation because I have actually heard that New York's system is better than Toronto's. And I've heard this from people who are from New York who come here and say, we like yours, they love it but it's not big enough. There's not enough. So having said that, I'm going to just go on to a quick rant here. It's going to take like one minute or less, and then we're going to basically call it an evening or a show, if you will. And that is, I want to talk about a movie. Well, technically something that's not available. It's one of those things we're talking about. The movie Hellfighters, a John Wayne movie I saw when I was a kid. I have been dying to see that movie again, and I can't find it to stream it anywhere i i mean i i i can't even pay for it i don't think i think i can in one spot but i can't stream it anywhere where it's available because everywhere it's available is only available on the american version of the app or an app that's not available in canada and i don't understand why that's a thing because it's not like it has some problem with canada uh there's a number of movies i like like that and hellfighters is a great one so if you're also canadian and you wish you could see some movies that you've noticed are available on Netflix in the U.S., but not in Canada. And there's no real reason why. And I'm not talking about new movies because Hellfighters is old. What's the licensing issue there? Right? Leave us a comment and let us know how you liked it. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and also the bell icon. And we will see you next week. Robert, you got some last thing to say and we will get on. I'm just looking for my America gif. I, I can't seem to find it, but I'll have it ready for now. We'll worry about that another time. So we got to get going because it's been 50 minutes already. <laughs> so thanks for watching United. We stand divided. We podcast and we will see you again next week. Have a good one.